Hi, Jun here. Before I get into my project, I want to show this amazing time-lapse video I made on this interesting organism that I am currently researching. What you just saw is an organism called Physarum polycephalum, or you can call it slime mold in general. It is classified under amoeba phylum, according to my mentor. And it is an organism that has both single cell stage and multicellular stage, or say it's a single celled environment that contains multiple nuclei. Plasmodium, the feeding stage of Physarum, is the main stage in its life cycle. In this stage, Physarum grows extensive tubes toward food sources and secret enzymes that digest the food. Remember, you can see that all you see, all the gross, yellow, moving stuff, is just one single cell. Digested food particles are then sent to every part of physerum through a cytoplasmic stream that runs in both forward and backward direction. It's just like our bloodstream. The main focus of my project is on the chemotactic reaction of physerum towards certain plants, as you can read from my title. The word chemotactic reaction means, in case you don't know, that physerum is capable of detecting the existence of certain chemicals of interest in the surrounding environment and then grow towards the chemicals if they attract it or grow away if they repel it. Previous researchers show that valerian, which is a plant, has strong attraction to physerum. Valerian, which is a sedative plant, contains a chemical called acnididine, or whatever it is pronounced, which is found to be responsible for valerian's attraction effects on physerum. Now since physerum is able to react to certain chemicals, I assume that there are protein receptors on the cell membrane of physerum, so ligands can bind to them and initiate certain reactions inside physerum that somehow cause the chemotactic reaction. However, according to a paper published in 1975, there isn't, well at least wasn't, any such specific protein receptors identified, meaning there may be only on specific receptors that bind to a range of chemicals, which makes sense since physerum is such a primitive organism. And due to my personal lack of knowledge in chemistry, I could not make any specific molecular connection between the structural differences and the binding effects of different chemical compounds. And my well-educated mentor confirmed that there isn't any evidence that is solid enough for me to make such a significant conclusion. However, valerian, which is proved to be a strong attractant to physerum, in case you forgot already, is a sedative plant after all. So a question came up in my mind, can other sedative plants be attractants too? In the beginning, I searched sedatives and physerum, and I couldn't find anything else but valerian related. So I consulted the nurse in our school who loves herbal tea and knows sedative plants very well. She provided me a list of sedative plants that potentially could be of my interest. After checking my accessibility to these plants or products made from these plants, I sorted out all but three plants, chamomile, hops, and St. John's wort. And I soon began to set up my lab to test them out. In my lab, there were four controls. First, a positive control that involves just physerum at the center of the dish and some valerian roots on the left side. And valerian, is the strong attractant in case you forgot again. This control can show me whether physerum can successfully perform positive chemotactic reaction toward an attractant, as you can see, it did. Secondly, a negative control. Salt was found to be a pretty strong repellent that physerum dislike and therefore will not grow into. This control shows that in my lab environment, physerum can be successfully repelled. Third, a neutral control. It basically involves just physerum. This control shows that physerum can successfully grow in my environment. And the fourth, which is even more boring but definitely essential, involves nothing but just agar. Why? Because I made my own agar dishes out of 98.2% pure agar powder and tap water. That's right, tap water. But because I'm not using nutrient agar, contaminations such as bacteria cannot grow on the dish. However, a boring control is still suggested just to make sure. So after I made sure my lab was all good, I tested the three plants out. I chose capsules made directly from grinded plants. For each set of experiments, I have 5 dishes that have the same setup. Physerum at the center, 
plant sample at the lab. I have three plants, so a total of 15 dishes were run and the data was consistent enough that I don't have to further repeat my experiment to increase the validity of my result. Though, if I have more time, I will do so. My results show, as you can see, that all three of them, chamomile, hops, and St. John's wort, are strong attractants to Pfizerum, with which Pfizerum performed positive chemotactic reaction. It grows toward it. And interestingly, these three plants were not mentioned as attractants to Pfizerum in any papers I have read so far. However, since I only read 13-ish research papers in this project and my knowledge of this organism or of biology in general still remains at a very fundamental level, I'm afraid that I cannot make such a profound conclusion and claim that what I found was a brand new exploration. Oh, why time this video? It's because they are cool. And it was suggested that the growth of Pfizerum should be checked every 6 hours and the final result should be recorded after 48 hours. And that is, obviously, impossible for a high school student's schedule. So I just used time this video to record what happened to my pet at home when I was in school and check the video for observation later. By the way, a total of 25,000 pictures were taken in this project. This video is just for a quick presentation purpose. It failed to show many significance that I have in my report. Have fun reading my paper. Jun here, signing you off.